Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Buy in the Sky Tools. My channel aims to bring you quality setups, tutorials, tips, guides, and tours from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So do check out my other videos too. In today's video, I want to go through some settings using the most recent version of the OpenXR Toolkit, which is the Beta 3 build version 1.0.1. My intention is to explain the various tools and settings you can use to dial in your VR for Microsoft Flight Simulator, as well as share my own settings, providing you with a starting point when setting up and improving your own system. I thought it would be a good idea to put all my OpenXR Toolkit content done so far into one video, with links to all the tools and other videos which cover the app. This really does help to improve the VR experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'm excited to bring you more exclusive updates as the Toolkit develops further. Once you enter the app in your VR headset using Control and F2, you'll see there are four tabs in the latest build. The first one called Performance is related to the overall performance and provides a few tools with the option of displaying an overlay in the headset to show the FPS, as well as the NIS and FSR upscaling tools. I have done videos about some of these tools, so I'll leave links to them rather than repeating the same information here. Lock Motion Reprojection, which only works with Windows Mixed Reality, is now included and allows you to disable automatic motion reprojection and also gives you the option to lock the frame rate to the desired fraction of the refresh rate. This is specifically helpful to those of us who enjoy using motion reprojection. I still prefer it turned off, but I have experimented with the tool and I recommend you do the same too and see what results you get and what you like. Again, I've left this off because I prefer not using motion reprojection. I've already covered the amazing fixed foveated rendering tool, which is now available in a previous video, which you can see by clicking on the link above. The next tab is the Appearance tab. This enables you to fine-tune the VR image you see by changing the brightness, contrast and saturation. The saturation tool also enables you to change all colours or each primary colour separately, which is super useful. Here you can see I've set my brightness at 43.5, contrast at 50.3, the saturation is on the global mode and the adjustment is set to 45.1. This is just my personal preference, but you can start with something like this and see how you go from there. I've also covered both the field of view and world scale tools and you can watch these videos in the video linked above for a detailed and concise look at each tool. And if you are enjoying this content, please go ahead and like and subscribe as it really helps get my content out to more people. Next we have the inputs tab. The shaking reduction tool is a new name for the prediction dampening tool, which I covered extensively in the video here. Again, I've left links to all videos mentioned in the description below. For this setting, I'm using minus 30% which is slightly different than my last setting, which I used minus 40%, but this works really well with the butt kicker, so I'll stick with this for now. But again, this is down to personal preference. Controller emulation will be usable only when hand tracking is supported by the system. This will enable the use of hand tracking in place of the VR controller, and it requires a compatible device, such as a Leap Motion Controller or an Oculus Quest 2 headset. And finally, the menu tab, which gives options to show expert settings, and the ability to change the font size of the headset display of this app, as well as menu timeout and eye offset settings, which can also be changed. I do cover all of this in more detail in the video at the top of the screen, so check that out as well if you haven't seen that already. I'm confident that this video, along with the other linked videos, provide you with the most comprehensive guide to getting the most out of and improving your VR with this amazing toolkit. Like always, please let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I would encourage you to add your thoughts in the comments so we can discuss them as a community. And do check out my other videos focusing on my latest and best VR settings for the HP Reverb G2 and the Vario Aero using the OpenXR Toolkit and see if they help push your VR experience to the next level. As always, I hope you find this content useful and I look forward to making the next video soon. In the meantime, as always, take care and stay safe.